Hi, and welcome to Statistics One. The purpose of this introductory video is just to give you an overview of the course and set some expectations uh, about what you'll see in the next six weeks here in Statistics One on Coursera. So most of this information is provided on the course website, but I'd like to highlight a few features of this course and of Coursera in general. Uh, and then I'd like to say a few words about the specific details of the course. So what you can expect in terms of workload, how many lectures there'll be each week, assignments, quizzes, and so on. Uh, first, let me start with uh, just a few words about Coursera. Uh, and I'd, I'd like to thank Daphne Kohler and, and Andrew Ng for creating such a, a wonderful site and such a wonderful mission. Um, and the mission of Statistics One fits so perfectly with Coursera. Uh, it's one of the main reasons I was drawn into doing this. Uh, if, you, if you look at the mission statement on Coursera, Coursera's website, uh, if, if you look at the information a, about Coursera, there, uh, there are a few things that, that really uh, strike me as being incredible. And, um, revolutionary. And one is the fact that we are able to provide access to quality education to a global audience. This has never been done before in the history of the world. This is amazing. Uh, because we know that education empowers people. It improves their lives, the lives of their families, and the communities they live in. That's directly from Coursera. And I love that phrase because it's, we all know that to be true. Education is essential. The other thing I like about Coursera's approach is pedagogically, they emphasize mastery of material. And again, that fits perfectly with how I approach teaching statistics. As I said in the, the first video, learning statistics is like learning a new language. So, of course, you have to master it to be able to use it correctly. So, the mission statement and the, vi the vision of Coursera fits perfectly with my own mission and vision in terms of teaching statistics, and, and it's why I do it for a living. So, with Statistics One, the approach I'm taking in this course is to teach, it, teach statistics as a language. And just like Coursera is bringing education to a global audience, statistics is a global language. It's a universal language. So by taking this course, you're empowering yourself, uh, again, consistent with Coursera's mission, and you can empower the people around you. And what I'd like to ask you to do as students in this course is once you become proficient in statistics, start promoting that uh, among your friends in your community. Uh, you may not know this, but 2013 is the International Year of Statistics. So you're ahead of the game. You're, you will finish this course uh, before the, the International Year of Statistics. So you are in position to become leaders in this new wave of presenting statistics to the world. This is an exciting opportunity. Right now, we have over 75,000 people in this course. My goal for this course is to have one of the highest retention rates we've ever seen in an online course. If we can do that, then we can really push this mission to take statistics and take Coursera and take top quality education global. So please try to stick with this course. And I'll give you some tips in a few moments on how to do that. Um, now let me just say a few things about this course in particular. So my approach to introduction to statistics. There are a lot of ways to begin learning statistics, a lot of ways to uh, introduce many of the concepts that will be covered in this course. Um, so I need to just tell you a little bit about how I do it. Um, one, you should know that 
I'm a psychology professor. My, my education is in psychology. It's not in math and statistics per se. Although I did have a lot of math and statistical training as a graduate student, uh, this is not a mathematical approach to statistics. So if, if that's what you're after, uh, then you might want to take another course on top of this course. Uh, Coursera now has two other courses uh, that also address statistics and in a sort of different way. So my point is that in this course we're taking a very conceptual approach to statistics. It's more about the why are we using these procedures than about the sort of detailed how are we doing them. That said, we will cover all the math underlying all the analyses that I cover, uh, but that's just not the emphasis. Um, the other general approach I take to statistics is, uh, and, I, and I take this from Bob Abelson, who taught statistics in psychology at Yale for decades. Uh, his popular book, the title is Statistics as Principled Argument. And the main thesis of his book was that the purpose of statistics is to provide principled arguments. Again, that's consistent with this idea that it's, it's a language. Uh, I'm sort of a non-confrontational person by nature, so I don't really like as argument. So I, I'd like to say it's, it's statistics as principled conversation. Uh, I, I like that better. Um, but again, I, and I take that from, from Bob Abelson. Um, two other features I'd like to highlight for this course and how I approach statistics is one, the importance of measurement of constructs. That's a key component of my own research. So I'll spend a lot of time in this course talking about things like reliability and validity uh, that you don't typically see in an in introductory statistics textbook or in a first course. Uh, I'll cover reliability, validity, measurement theory in more detail than, than most other books or other courses would. And again, because I think that's just so essential. And finally, um, a lot of you may wonder, a lot of my colleagues who might watch this may wonder, is he going to teach null hypothesis significance testing? Um, and yes, I will. <laughs> um, but I will also, of course, uh, discuss the limitations, the flaws of null hypothesis significance testing. And we will cover other sorts of information that necessarily should be provided along with any null hypothesis, hypothesis significance test, such as effect size, confidence intervals. So we'll cover those as well. And finally, on that point, at the very end of the course, you'll see what I like to emphasize is model comparison. Uh, so rather than just engage in null hypothesis significance testing, let's compare models. And that's where we'll end uh, at the end of the six weeks. So finally, in, in this, at the end of this, this introduction, I just want to say a few words about the specifics of the course. Uh, so all of this information is provided on the course website. There's a home page. Right below that, you'll see a course schedule. And in the course schedule, it's very detailed. You'll see exactly when lectures will be made available on the website and you'll see exactly when quizzes will be made available, when they're due, when assignments are, are made available, when they're due, and so on. Uh, the general structure is we will post three lectures per week. So the expectation is you that you will watch three lectures per week. Uh, you can expect each lecture to be under an hour, uh, so my advice is to allocate about three to four hours per week just viewing lectures. There's one quiz per week and that should take only about a half hour to an hour at most. And then there's one assignment per week. 
that that may take just an hour. It may take up to three hours, if particularly if if writing code and learning software is new to you, then that might take some more time. Uh, also on the the home page, you'll see a link to discussion forums, and we've created several forums already, and I hope that you. Uh, join these forums and, and actively participate in them. Uh, you'll notice that we've set up s several forums on specific topics. One is just a general content, so any, any general questions that you have about the course, bring to the general forum. Then there's a forum for the software package R, which is what we'll be using in this course. Uh, so if you have questions specific to R, you can go to the R forum. We've also created a forum just for math. So uh, in my experience teaching statistics, I know people coming to this content, some people have advanced math education. So some of you have probably taken calculus and even courses beyond calculus, whereas others, you may have not seen math since you know, your high school algebra class. So, so for people who are sort of in that latter group, that's a good forum. If, if you just want to ask a really basic question about some of the mathematical computations that we're covering, you can go to the math forum. Uh, and then finally, there's a technical forum. If, if there are issues that you run into uh, with the website, with downloading software, you can bring those to the technical forum. Another thing I'd like to mention, just along the same lines as the discussion forums, is there's a link on the, on the website called Join a Meetup. And this is something new that Coursera has created and, and has been wonderfully successful. So around the world, people are finding just ge geographically close by neighbors who are taking the same course and they actually get together uh, in real life, not here online, uh, and discuss the course. So I hope that happens all over the world. And uh, hopefully, I can you know, travel and, and maybe uh, join in on one of these meetups. Um, just the last thing I want to say about the, the details of the course, uh, there are assessments built into this course. So it's not like a, a regular college course where you'll be getting a grade, but I still structured it that way. So the final grade, if you will, is, is, consists of how you do on the weekly quizzes, how you do on the weekly assignments, and then the, there will be a midterm exam and a final exam. And if you just sort of aggregate how you do on all of those assessments, you'll get sort of an overall view of, of your performance in the course. But again, I purposely left that to the end of this video because that's not really the, the emphasis here. And the emphasis is on mastery of this material. So really everyone should be getting an A or a, a hundred percent if we want to grade it that way. Um, so one of the wonderful things about this, this forum and this approach to teaching is I finally don't have to worry so much uh, about the assessments. That said, they're there. Uh, because it, as my advisor in graduate school likes to say, fear is a great motivator. <laughs> so there are weekly quizzes, uh, so you should be uh, motivated to look at those lectures every week, uh, take notes, and be prepared for their weekly quiz. You'll, you'll get a weekly assignment so that you're motivated to get into the R software package and, and learn how to write code in R, and so on. Uh, so let me wrap up this introduction just by again saying welcome to Statistics One. Uh, I'm very excited about the next six weeks. I hope you are too, and I hope you can stick with it and we can have a really strong retention rate. So welcome, and I'll see you in Lecture One.